Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. The Beguiled is a 1971 American Southern Gothic film that was directed by Don Siegel, and it stars Clint Eastwood, Geraldine Page, and Elizabeth Hartman. The script was written by Albert Maltz and is based on a 1966 novel that was titled A Painted Devil. The movie marks the third of five collaborations between Siegel and Clint Eastwood, following Coogan's Bluff in 1968, Two Mules for Sister Sarah from 1970, and continuing with Dirty Harry from 1971, and Escape from Alcatraz in 1979. The storyline goes that during the Civil War, Union Corporal John McBurney, played by Clint Eastwood, is wounded and is discovered in the woods by a young girl from a school for women in Louisiana. With a broken leg, he is nursed back to health with the help of the school's owner, Martha Farnsworth, played by Geraldine Page. As the rest of the women who tend to him become fascinated by the close proximity of a full-grown man, McBurney is aware that he is behind enemy lines, and he manages to charm the women into allowing him to stay. One of the teachers at the school, Edwina, played by Elizabeth Hartman, through tending to him, falls in love with the man. And the soldier manipulates the woman's emotions, convincing her that he loves her too. Eastwood's character also seduces Martha Farnsworth. Understanding that she misses her brother terribly, he helped her run the school and also held a really unusual place as a romantic partner with her. One of the older students, Carol, played by Joanne Harris, approaches the soldier and openly shows her affections for him. Seeking new sensual experiences, she convinces him to make love to her. When McBurney is discovered by the other women in Carol's room, they make a concerted effort to ensure that the wounded soldier will not be allowed to return to Union troops, now occupying the southern territories of Louisiana. Clint Eastwood was given a copy of the book by producer Jennings Lang, and he was engrossed in reading it all through the night. This was the first of several films where Eastwood agreed to storylines where nubile females look at him in an adoring manner. Eastwood considered the film an opportunity to play his real emotions and to not just be lighting cannons with cigars. Albert Maltz was brought in to draft the script, but disagreements in the end led to a revised script that was done by Claude Travers. Maltz had originally written a script that had a happy ending, in which Eastwood's character and the girl live happily ever after. Both Eastwood and the director Don Siegel felt that an ending more faithful to that of the book would be a stronger anti-war statement, and Eastwood's character would be killed. The movie, according to the director, deals with themes of sex, violence, vengeance, and was based around the basic desire of women to castrate men. Though the central theme of the film is the impact of a man having sex with multiple women. Universal Pictures initially wanted the director to film at Disney Studio Ranch but Siegel preferred to have it filmed at a real antebellum estate near Baton Rouge. The mansion where the film takes place is about 25 miles from Baton Rouge, near the banks of the Mississippi River, and it was an old dilapidated antebellum home that the filmmakers thought was really beautiful, and they spent a small fortune to restore the white pillared building to its Civil War character. Portions of the interior shots were filmed at Universal Studios, with filming starting in April of 1970 
and it lasted for 10 weeks. Eastwood had signed a long-term contract with Universal, but became really angry with the studio because he felt that they botched this film's release. This eventually led to his leaving the studio in 1975 after the release of The Iger Sanction, which he directed as well as starred in. He would not work for Universal again until 2008 when he worked on The Changeling. Pamela Ferdin who was 11 during the filming of the project, said in a 1995 interview that Clint Eastwood kissing her to keep her from screaming when she sees the troops passing by was a total surprise to her. She wasn't expecting it at all because it wasn't in the script. Eastwood was just supposed to cover her mouth. She found out later that the director told Eastwood to kiss her because he thought it would be more provocative. They were able to use the very first take because her stunned expression was real and was completely perfect, just what the director was looking for. Eastwood has made the statement that he was a little bit scared about first working with Geraldine Page because she was such a renowned New York stage actress, and he felt that she might not be too thrilled working with him. But much to his surprise, the very first day on the set, she walked up to him and smiled and said, Hey, I'm a real big fan of your TV series, Rawhide. The two female leads in the movie, Elizabeth Hartman and Geraldine Page, ended up dying three days apart, somewhat tragically, through much of her life. Elizabeth Hartman suffered from depression, but I'll tell you she was a rising star in Hollywood. She had been in this film and in Walking Tall and was considered to have one of the best futures of any female in Hollywood. But on June 10, 1987, she died after jumping from the window of her fifth floor apartment. The initial reports of this were pretty vague mainly because detectives were unable to identify the body because she had basically become a recluse years earlier and neighbors didn't know who she was. On June 13, 1987, Geraldine Page failed to arrive at the Neil Simon Theater for both her afternoon and evening performances in a play there. At the end of the show's evening performance, The play's producer announced that she had been found dead in her lower Manhattan townhouse. It was determined that she had died from a heart attack there. She was only 62. Take a look back at this gripping Clint Eastwood film. It's a good one. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.